wildflowers of the Great Smoky Mountains, plants with a story. Thank you for joining Master Gardeners, Knox County Master Gardeners, Vicki Smith and Lynn Carlson. Facts about the Great Smoky Mountains. It's the most visited national park in the United States with more than 1,600 species of flowering plants. Our goal today is to highlight a, a few of the 1,600 flowers that have an interesting backstory, actually 23 interesting plants with backstories. The flowers in this stalk stay in their natural habitat to be enjoyed by visitors, provide food and pollination for wildlife, leave them where they're found, they're in their desired habitat, at home choose nursery propagated plants, and pay attention to the cultural requirements that these plants will meet. Let's start our journey, but remember, don't forget to look down as well as around. I've had an opportunity to do a couple of hikes and that is extremely true. Most of the plants are down and they're small. So you have to take your time and pay attention to what's below your feet as you're walking in order to find these flowers. The sharp load perennial herb found in the rich upland woods blooms February to April. The Greeks called it heper, meaning liver, was used to treat cowardice, freckles, and indigestion. Wood anemone. It's a dicot, which means that it has it in the plants have an embryo which gives rise to two seed leaves. The mature leaves have veins in a network pattern and flowers have four to five parts. They're found in the eastern highland round, eastward in the rich woods. When you're walking in the woods, you're gonna be walking on layer after layer after layer of leaves that have been composting. So um, that's why so many of these flowers are found only in the area where you're going to see them because it's not everywhere that is going to have this type of habitat. The flowers found in the evening, cloudy day will have a flower close to protect the delicate structures for the pollinators. Anemones take their name from the Greek god of winds, Anemos. Dutchman's breeches. A perennial herb that flowers April to May. It almost looks like a victory sign. They're found in rich woods. Their flowers resemble baggy pants worn by Dutchmen hanging upside down on an arching clothesline. Dicentra is Greek for twice spurred, referring to the flower shape. Squirrel horn. It's a perennial herb that flowers April to May, also found in rich woods. The common name comes from the shape of underground stems which have little green, little yellow bulblets that resemble grains of corn. And the bulblets are just tiny, tiny little flowers, but they're under the ground. Onondaga called this ghost corn, believing it was food for spirits. Small yellow lady slippers. A monocot, they're grasses or grass like plants with only one leaf embryo on deciduous plants that bloom found in shady upland deciduous woods, swamps, wetlands, rocky slopes. When a pollinator enters the pouch, they find no nectar. To escape the exit, one of two small openings in rear of pouch where the pollinator's back is coated with pollen. Bluets, Quakers ladies. They're a perennial herb that bloom April to May. 
They're found in open, deciduous woodlands, meadows, and grassy places. Cerulea means sky blue, alluding to the color of the flowers, as indicated by its Latin name, Houstonia cerulea. The Cherokee Indians use leaves to make a tea to prevent bedwetting. Jack in the Pulpit. It's a monocot perennial herb that blooms from April to May. It's found in rich, moist woods, stream banks, and most of Tennessee. The species name from Greek refers to the plant's three leaflets. The root was a food item for Native Americans. However, eating raw could cause a severe burning reaction in your throat. The yellow, and yellow mandarin fairy bells, a perennial herb that blooms April to May, mainly in the highlands in Tennessee. Fairy bells, the common name, is descriptive of the flowers that hang like bells. You'll notice that they're hanging down and they're kind of a yellow green um, color, not as green as the leaves. And the berries are a food source for the birds and rodents. Squall root or cancer root, perennial root parasite that flowers from April to June and lacks chlorophyll. Parasitic plants benefit from their host plants. They're found in rich woodlands and the squall root can live up to 10 years and is more common in older forest. It resembles a pine cone and lives at the base of an oak or a beech tree. They were, it's collected, it was collected by Indians for food and it's a favorite food of bears after hibernation. Actually, the bears use it as sort of a laxative from after they been in hibernation to get their stuff flowing again. Violet or wood sorrel, it's a perennial herb that blooms April to June. It's found in dry woods, rocky places, pinelands, and barrens. It's also known as the wild shamrock. As you can see the, the three leaves. Shamrocks associated with the Irish legend, the three leaflets symbolize the Holy Trinity, three and one. Wild geranium. It's a showy common woodland perennial that blooms April to June. It's also called astringent root, chocolate flower, crowfoot, doe's foot, old mage nightcap, and shame's foot. Shame's face, and many, many of our older residents will more commonly use the names that are mentioned here. I mean, they have lots of these flowers have many, many different names depending on who you're speaking with and where they grew up. Used in the Appalachian Mountains in the 1800s to treat flux. And flux is an abnormal discharge of blood or other bodily fluids. Fly poison, it's a monocot perennial that blooms May to June, May to July. Found in Messick. Messick is a moist environment to dry woodlands in East Tennessee. Called, called fly poison because it poisoned the cattle that fed on it in the fall. The bulb is extremely poisonous, but the nectar serves as food for the silver spotted skipper and other butterflies. The New Jersey tea a dicot perennial shrub that blooms May to August. It's found in open woods, roads, and waste areas. It has a subtle, sweet aroma. The fresh or the dried leaves are used in the U.S. as a substitute for heavily taxed oriental tea that precipitated the Boston Tea Party. Spreading avians, it's a perennial herb that flowers June to July found in unexposed rocky outcrops at high elevations. And these are a very, very small plant and you're gonna find them very low growing and on the sheltered side of rocks most of the time. And they've been an endangered species since 1990. And they're unique to Eastern Tennessee and Western North Carolina. 
The Indian Pipe is a solitary, nodding, urn-shaped flower that turns pink after fertilization. It blooms from June to September. It's found in rich, shady woods and can live without chlorophyll. Even though there are leaves in this photograph, the leaves do not belong to the plant. Native Americans collected the clear juice from the stream to use, stem to use as an eye medicine and sharpen vision. The spotted wintergreen, Pip Pipsisawa, is a perennial that flowers June to July. It's found in dry, acidic woods. From the Greek word kima, winter, and philo, to love, refers to the evergreen leaves all winter. And the leaves can be chewed for refreshment and, and a bittersweet taste has it as once an ingredient in a commercial root beer. The tea berry, wintergreen, or checkerberry is an evergreen low shrub that fruits in July. It's found in dry, acidic woods with red aromatic berries that are edible, raw, and taste like wintergreen. The tea berry leaves and berries made into a tea treated asthma, restored strength, and promoted lactation after childbirth. Fire on the Mountain is a dicot annual herb that blooms June to October. And if you think you're looking at something that we see at Christmas, a poinsettia, it is certainly very similar to that. It's found in moist soil and shady areas. The wild poinsettia is sometimes called the painted leaf. The genus Euphorbia is named for Euphorbes, personal physician of King Juba of Numidia. That's a mouthful. <laughs> Jimson weed is a coarse, strongly seeded, scented, weedy annual that flowers June to August. Now this will be one of the larger or the taller of the flowers that are in this presentation. They'll get four to five foot tall, so they're a little more easily visible. They're found in sunny, disturbed ground, known as the thorn apple, so they're not edible. They have a rank smell, which is indicative of poisonous, and they're named after, so a lot of times they were called the um, Jamestown weed because English stories consumed it as a, an hallucinogenic during the Bacon's Rebellion and spent 10 days or so in an altered state. So not exactly something you'd wanna go out and take to do. Um, there's a real green um, at the base of the plant. It's like a seed pod. It's very, very thorny. So most of this plant is got, um, it's a beautiful plant, but not, so, not necessarily attractive in a lot of its characteristics. The rattlesnake plantain, is a perennial herb found in cool, moist regions near conifers. The bloom time is July, called the creeping, it's called creeping due to the spread by rise, and which means its roots um, go underground and go in various directions. It's in the orchid genus, and it's known as the jewel orchid due to the colorful, richly patterned foliage. Virginia Meadow Beauty, a perennial that blooms July to September. It's found in wet marshes and fields. The rootstock, which is the part that grows underneath the ground, can be eaten. Young leaves are sweetish and slightly sour and can be eaten raw in salads. Rexia, from the Greek rexico, meaning to rupture. Red turtle head. It's beautiful, isn't it? It's a southern Appalachian perennial herb that flowers June to September. It's found in rich coves, open spring banks in the Appalachian Mountains of Tennessee, North Carolina, and South Carolina. Plants in the Cleone genus are commonly called turtle heads for their two-lipped flowers that resemble a turtle's head in shape. Virgin's Bower, the devil's darning needles, is a climbing herbaceous perennial vine that blooms July to September. Found in wet woods, along streams, and commonly on fences, Charles Darwin discovered each new leaf stalk revolved as it grew 
completing a full circle every five to six hours until it finds an object to climb. So this will probably be the tallest of the plants that are mentioned in this presentation. There are more than 1,600 wildflower stories in the Great Smoky Mountains. Remember, take only memories, leave only footprints. We hope that you've enjoyed the presentation and we'd like to thank you for joining us. And these are the references that we use to provide the information we shared with you today. Thank you.